Hello everyone, this is Alessandro Zamparelli and in this tutorial I want to show you how I created this helmet here, this sci-fi helmet here, starting from these and those. Uh, before starting, this tutorial is not really about uh, modeling techniques, it's more about how to use uh, tissue, in particular the tessellation tool that we have in tissue, in order to automatically generate this uh, assembly here, starting from uh, the different pieces and uh, a driving topology that gives the information on how to apply each component in the different part of the geometry. So I'm not really focusing on uh, modeling tools, so if you are looking for something more basic, probably this could be a bit advanced. And um, the idea was to keep the workflow of creating this object non-destructive. So basically, if we make any change in one of those elements and we refresh this, we should, be see, we should see the change applied automatically on this object here. So just for giving you an idea, if I change something here, for example, so if I go to edit mode, and uh, let's say I want to change uh, the element that I have here. I want to give a different shape. For example, I want just to keep it smooth. I can just select this loop and then I can assign a different material that will call a different object. So how it works. As you can see, I have many materials on this object. Each color basically is a different material. And the name of the materials that I have here is matching exactly the name of the object that I have here. So as you can see, I have some components here and the name is the same of the material. So if here I use the solid material, it's going to be using uh, this one instead of this. So now I can refresh this helmet. In this specific moment, the settings are quite high because I want to keep a very nice and smooth curvature. So it's going to take uh, a while. So we can press refresh and it should take around uh, 20 seconds at the moment because I have also some modifier on the object. So at the end of the tessellation, I'm also using an additional subdivision surface that make everything uh, more, even more smooth. So in uh, 20 seconds, it should uh, refresh and reload the changes here. So this is the helmet with different components assigned. And the nice thing of this particular approach to the modeling of this object is that you can easily change the different part uh, and without the need of remodeling again the object, you can easily really update it. And also, Another important feature is that if we check the curvature of the object, it's quite uh, nice, actually. While uh, usually when you work with mesh modeling and you have a very nice and smooth geometry, when you start editing uh, uh, some specific areas, uh, it's, uh, you can easily get something that is not really as smooth as this one. So let's see how I did those. So I can uh, delete that object because we are going to recreate from scratch. So <clears throat> let me return here so we can see the materials. And uh, something important, let me use again the original rib component. Uh, about this object here, as you can see the topology of the faces, uh, how they are oriented, how they are connected, the loops that we are creating is quite important in order to have a specific uh, shape in the final element, in the final object. So, in order to have a smooth and nice geometry, I'm using this technique of projecting this shape here on top of a basic shape that I have here. So, let me hide this uh, topology object. So, this very smooth geometry, if I go to edit mode, you will see that it's actually very low poly. So, if I hide my subdivision surface, of course I'm using a mirror. So this is a very polygonal shape. And uh, usually I like to keep in that way because with a subdivision surface on top of that, you have very nice and smooth shapes. Of course, if you want more detail, more sharp parts, you can increase the number of faces of this object. 
So I use this for giving the general shape and then I have the topology that is used for, let me return to object mode, that is used for articulating the component and makes basically the drawings on top of that shape. So <clears throat> in this case, I'm using a lot of levels of subdivision because uh, I need them for having a nice result at the end, but for the moment we can keep it uh, more low poly. Okay. So the number of subdivisions that I have here is going to affect also how slow is going to be the tessellation. So let's try to say, okay, I have some components. As you can see, the shapes are really simple, really easy to, to make. And in this case, uh, there are a couple of things that you have to keep in mind for making those components. And it's more clear if I go to... Maybe if I activate the wireframe. Okay. So if you give a look to the number of subdivisions that we have here, you should see that they all kind of match. So usually for each side, I have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, eight faces. And this, for example, that is the solid panel, the solid component, have eight subdivisions in both directions. And it's better if you keep the same amount of subdivision in uh, all the components, so they are going to match always. So, for example, this one is made for match this one <coughs> in one specific direction. So if I move here, you see that the number of polygons is the same and they always match. Of course, this one is made for having another one in that direction. So in this direction, it's going to match only itself another component that have the same shape. The same thing for this one. On one side is going to match the glass material, the glass component, that is this one, eight subdivisions always. And in the other direction have a different shape because the other component that should find in the other direction is itself, basically. The same thing for this tube component. We have this tube shape inside. On this side is matching the eight faces. In the other side, just have a different uh, shape. Why eight, eight faces? There is no uh, specific reason. Just depend on uh, how much smoothness you want to get at the end. And uh, yeah, depend just basically uh, on the quality of the final result that you want. We will see how it looks in that way, but you can also try to work with less faces. This depends on the number of elements and articulation that you want to add. So it's probably better to make some tests and see how it works. So let's hide the wireframe and let's return here. <clears throat> okay, so how can we make the tessellation on top of this object? We can uh, select, for example, any one of those components. Let's take just the solid. Then we can add to the selection this surface here. And I can use my tessellate uh, tool here. And for the moment, just press OK and let's see what happens. We will find all those settings also in another panel that have a nicer layout and will make it more easy to interact with them. So if I just press OK, this is the result that we automatically get. Okay, not really the helmet that we were hoping for, of course, because now we are just using one component and uh, really flat because it's using basically this shape here without the subdivision surface and without the shrink wrap. So we are tessellating on this object here. So this looks like an Evangelion uh, helmet. But if we want to use the nicer and smooth component that follow nicely this shape, instead of using the quad tessellation, we can go here to object data and see all the settings for the tessellation here that we can still interact with. Instead of using the quad tessellation, I want to use the patch. How does patch work? The patch works uh, with the quad faces only the quad faces, so it's not allowed to work with triangles or any other polygon, but quad. And with those quad faces, it's going to see how they are smooth according to the subdivision surface or some other modifier that are working on top of this object. 
So as you can see, the modifier that we have, we have a mirror, then we have a subdivision surface that is defining basically those patches that we see here. And we have also shrink wrap. <clears throat> the shrink wrap is uh, an allowed modifier that you can have uh, after the subdivision surface because uh, it's not changing the indexes of the vertices of the object. So remember that uh, you use the subdivision surface in order to understand how are distributed the patches and which are the vertices of each patch. And uh, after this subdivision surface modifier, you can only have modifiers that doesn't change the topology of the mesh. So all the modifiers that are under the form are allowed because they doesn't change the indexes, they just move the vertices of a mesh. So they are allowed. Everything that is inside the generator is going to be a problem because uh, if you use one of those, you're going to change the indexes of the vertices and the tissue doesn't recognize anymore the patches. So this is quite important. You can use a displace, you can use a lot of things, but the important thing is that you don't have to change the topology of a mesh after this guy here. So <clears throat> let's see how it works. I select my object here, I go to the tessellate settings and instead of quad, I'm using patch. Okay, it's actually following the shape. It's considered also the mirror because it needs to use the modifier of the object. And as you can see, they are banded and we are following the shape. How can we use now the different component according to the material that we have here? We have seen that it's important that we have the name of the material that match the name of the component. And the only thing that we need to do is to use an option that is called, here, sorry, is called multi-component. It's kind of hidden because it's inside uh, selective. Here, multi-component, just press this. And now, we see that is using different components according to the different parts. Hmm, doesn't look so good. But the thing is, we have to fix a couple of other things. One thing that we have to fix is uh, the thickness, of course. As you can see, they are quite flat. Uh, in this case, I prefer, especially when I have many components, I prefer to use an option that is called Align to Origins. Because you can see that here, this component, for example, is made to be quite uh, taller compared to the other, while here, they all have the same thickness. And that's actually not nice, especially if you want to keep some alignment, because you want the parts that are connected and welded together. So we need to find a very precise way to align the different component. And in this case, if you use the option that is called uh, align to origins here is going to use the local coordinate in the z direction only the z direction in order to find the proper way to match them in the thickness so if i use this option here it's gonna use uh, has thickness for the component exactly the thickness that we have here align to origins Okay, Okay. the alignment of the component itself is better, but they are still uh, short. So, an option is just to change the scale here, but in this case, we have to consider that by default, the tessellation changes the thickness according to the areas of the faces. But in this specific case, because we want to have exactly the thickness that we have here, and in order to prevent also other issues that may occur, especially in the patch tessellation, I want to use the constant thickness. So it will use exactly the coordinate that we have here. So for example, if I check the coordinate of this face is uh, 1.45, this one is uh, zero centimeter. This is one centimeter point 45. So if I use the constant, it, the thickness of this part should work hopefully with the same amount. So let's check constant. 
okay it looks quite taller let me check the thickness yes exactly more kind of the thickness that I was looking for now the thickness and the alignment between the component should be correct and um, so we did uh, we did use the constant thickness and also align to origins here okay now the rotation of a component it's of course wrong it's not correct there is an option in a tissue that allows you to manually rotate some components so let's say that those are fine this one is not right we can select whoops let me remove this and this and this we can select the face that we want to rotate so for example this one should be and in tissue we can use rotate left on right so if I rotate you have to recompute the old tessellation and now it's correct but of course this one should be rotated 180 degrees but the problem happened here in the mirror part because uh, the rotation is different but because I'm using a mirror modifier I'm not allowed to change the rotation of this compared to this one so this is actually an issue and usually if you work with a mirror and you don't want to apply the mirror uh, this can be an issue so what I want to use uh, is another technique that is also quite faster because you don't have to rotate manually each face uh, according to the rotation of the others we can use a different technique that is based on the UV mapping of the geometry so the idea is that uh, if I for example check the UV of this object here let's say that we have uh, this face I want to reset I press U reset the UV so tissue is gonna check uh, according to the X and Y in the UV actually it's U and V is gonna check which is the closest rotation to X and Y here so according to this rotation is gonna find the correct rotation for the component and this is actually simple here to make all of them consistent because I can just select the entire loop and at the end I can select this face here and I can press U follow active quad Mm, we can use uh, even, it's fine. Okay. Um, actually, I already had a UV mapping here that was made uh, positively for uh, working correctly here. So I'm going to delete the UV mapping that I have here. I'm going to create a new one. So let's try again. So I select one face of a loop that should be consistent. I press U for reset this face then the entire loop keeping this one as active phase i press u and i use follow active quad okay it's not a problem if i go outside to the boundary the only thing that is important is that the rotation of all those faces is consistent so now here i can try to refresh this object using the rotation instead of default I can use active UV. Okay, this is now nice, continuous, and sounds good. We can choose between two different rotation. For example, now it's uh, more uh, you have we have a slope here, and it's more uh, sharp here. If we want to change the rotation in the other way, we can go to the UV editing. We can select just this loop. We can select all the faces with A here, rotate 180 degrees. And now if I refresh, we should see the different rotation. Okay. So we can keep in this way. And uh, for example, we can fix the grid as well this grid that should be along the side maybe I can hide the wireframe for this object okay, nicer 
so I can uh, make all of them this loop consistent so basically for each loop I have to make all the faces consistent so we can for example select this reset or we can just select directly the loop press U and uh, reset and U follow active quad okay and we can do the same maybe it's better to check what happened here okay I also for this prefer the other rotation so if we want to rotate we can go here R180 okay and now we make this loop consistent this loop in this case is the transition between the solid part and the glass so you see that we have this here so this is made for continue this one or this one or this one or this one or this one so it can match uh, all the basically all the solid uh, component in this direction and create the glass in the other direction and for in this side it's gonna match this one so we need to make all of them consistent select the loop you reset you follow active quote okay let's see if it's correct okay the direction is good but should be rotated 180 degrees because this part is supposed to be on that side so i select again this guy i select all the faces are 180 and let's refresh this okay same thing for this loop here so i select this loop you reset you follow after quote okay mm, actually i already see that the direction is vertical while it's supposed to be horizontal in this case because uh, the connection between the other similar pieces should be in the x direction you see the x here so for sure this direction is going to be wrong so I can rotate 90 and now I can refresh this and uh, of course is it okay no it's not it's not it's in the wrong direction so again rotate 180 okay let's check okay yes now it's correct okay those for example they are not consistent so i can select those six you reset you follow active quad refresh we can choose between two different direction one option is to have them in this direction the other option is to rotate 90 degrees and see how it looks with rotation in the other way okay i don't mind both looks nice to me and uh, the grid for the grid we can uh, the direction in this case is not important because the grid is symmetrical so we just need to make sure that the loop is gonna be right you reset you follow active quad okay should be fine let's check and uh, working with a UV it's easier because you can automatically make uh, all the part consistent and also works with a mirror as you can see uh, also for the grid actually we can choose between uh, two different direction um, before it was in the other way 
but we can also see how it looks at the end with this direction here. So the nice thing of this approach is that you can experiment quite easily. It's just, uh, you can just change the rotation, you can just change the material and you're gonna see different effect and result. Um, the tubes here, they are definitely going in the wrong direction. So here as well, I can select this loop. This is representing the, the tube. U, reset, U, fall of active quad. Okay, should be fine because it's horizontal and that's good. Also, what else? Ah, here on the back. This loop should be consistent. U, reset, U, fall of active quad. Okay, okay, it's horizontal, that's good. Of course, horizontal, vertical, it depends on how you created the component. I just gave to me the rule to keep the connection horizontal in this direction. So, okay, that's good. This part here that they called shield is not consistent. Also for this one, we can choose between two different directions and the result is going to be different. Because before I kept in that direction, I prefer to see how it looks in this direction here. So I can select here these six faces. U, reset, U, follow active quad. And uh, in this case, uh, let me check with orientation. So those are going horizontal. So it's gonna be okay, exactly as I wanted. So let me double check. Refresh. Okay, yes, this part here as well should be fixed. So, you uh, reset, you follow the active quad. Okay, should be fine, yes, and this one as well. Oops. U, reset, U, follow up active quad. Okay, horizontal, it's good. This one, I have to reset this one as well. So we are gonna match the two sides. Let me check now. Oh, this one, no, it's not correct. Okay, that sounds good for me. And uh, oh, also this border here between the glass and the shield, the, the solid part. So I can select this loop. And you reset, you follow active quad. Okay, let's see if so. Before that, I can start unwrapping those as well. You reset, you follow active port. Okay, the direction is good. Let me refresh this. Oh no, the direction is not the one that I wanted. The one that I wanted. But for this one is uh, fine. No, it's not fine. It's the other side. So let me rotate the border of 180 and this one I want to rotate just 90 degrees okay perfect so good 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 this one okay last part and uh, you reset you follow active quad okay direction is good and for them you reset you follow active quad and uh, okay let's see oh 
Okay. Um, prefer to rotate this one. Maybe. Okay. And uh, okay, let's keep in that way. Okay, now actually we have a problem because some of the component have the modifiers on top of them, some other doesn't. For example, this doesn't have a modifier because I wanted to manually extrude some pieces. This one have a subdivision surface modifier in a simple mode because I wanted to increase the number of uh, subdivisions. So if you want to see uh, an even number of subdivisions in all of them, that they should be consistent, remember, I need to use the modifiers of the component. So instead of manually applying the modifiers in the component, in the tissue settings, the tessellate settings, I can use for the components the modifiers. Just enough to activate this branch icon for the modifiers here. It's going to take some more time because now we have more polygons, but the quality is definitely better. Now, all the pieces are not really connected to each other, so it's important in this kind of uh, uh, object, in this kind of connection between the components, it's important to activate the merge option. And also, if we want to see a smooth shading, oh, wait, now it's not merging nicely because, as you can see, it's merging some pieces that are too close to each other, so probably we can reduce the distance for uh, the merge. Okay, better. Yes. And if we want to see a smooth shading, we can just uh, activate Shade Smooth here. But each time that you refresh, it's going to lose that settings. For this way, for this reason, I have this uh, smooth shading here. That automatically will set the result as smooth. Okay. So, I think we did it. And uh, now we can see how it looks. Okay, the material are the same, is using exactly the same material that we have here in the components, so it's not gonna lose them. So you can play with the material and then you can refresh and you can see different results applied here. And in, you can check also the curvature here, probably with a matcap, like this one. Okay. It's uh, nice, but it would be even nicer if we add a subdivision surface on top of this object. Before doing that, I want actually to close this part. Let me activate the face orientation. You can see with the face orientation that uh, some parts, okay, this is because it's transparent, but here in particular, it's open. Of course, because the component are, have openings on the side because they should allow the connectivity with the other pieces without having uh, faces in between. But at the end, when you create an object and you have a naked edge, like here, you are getting uh, an opening. For that reason, there is a settings also for that. In the tessellation setting, when you use merge for closing an object, you have some option for closing automatically mesh. Uh, this works only in specific cases. For example, here, what, you, what we need to do is just uh, basically a bridge between this loop and the other one. So if you have a loop that has the same amount of polygon, that's uh, the ideal condition. In this case, if I use close mesh bridge loops, it should close them. Yes, good. So, at the end, this object is actually closed. And also, because of how I created the component, this part is separated. So, for example, if you want to 3D print an object with these kind of subdivisions in different elements, different plates, 
you can easily generate all of them at once so we are gonna match and uh, we're gonna create this nice continuity between the part and then you can separate them because we are separated object this one as well and you have for example this nice border let me use alt b you have this nice border that support the glass for example and for 3d printing i think it can be a nice feature a nice way to achieve this kind of um, feature in very smooth and complex geometry like this now the idea was to add an extra subdivision surface on top of this just for adding more smoothness and uh, make it even nicer okay but there is something wrong so if we check the subdivisions here this is probably not super nice because the number of subdivisions that we have here so the subdivision of this and the subdivision of this are actually different this one in particular have a bigger face compared to this one it's better in order to have a nicer quality here to have uh, more subdivisions here in order to give enough points enough vertices in order to interpolate between them and having uh, the smoothness of a surface so this is gonna make the tessellation slower but it's actually better if you keep a higher value i think i used four before so the density is uh, higher than the one that we are getting here so if i refresh now it's better when you refresh if you hide the modifier it's not create a, gonna create a problem but it's gonna make it slower so now i want to refresh it's gonna take more time probably okay and now if i add the subdivision surface okay definitely better okay sounds good we can put the element on the head of our guy here okay so now that we have defined everything it's gonna be much easier for us to just experiment with that so let's say that here i don't want this uh, tube uh, geometry but instead of that i want uh, this light element here and i want to add uh, another grid here we can easily play with that and change it or maybe we want other glass here not gonna be a problem the loop are already consistent between them oh let me hide the wireframe uh, yes an optimal display here much better so for example here i can use my, my border that is the transition between solid and the glass and here i can use my reinforced glass that i call the solar panel here okay so if i refresh it's gonna take uh, a while because i have all the settings if you want to just experiment maybe it's better to keep it uh, slower and lower and uh, deactivate the subdivision surface so if we want to experiment it's better to keep the lower setting okay the border is in the wrong direction so I need to rotate those 180 so if I refresh this one yes 
the border glass have the, this glass part that is uh, doesn't have those additional elements so if I want to reduce this gap I should play with the topology here so probably I should uh, scale that like this and maybe move some vertices Oops. Here I use the crease in order to have uh, some more roundness around here. But if I remove that, Shift E minus one, for example, I can have uh, more sharp corners. So usually I use some crease sometimes in the topology, only if I want uh, more roundness in some part that have some uh, connection that are not orthogonal at some point. So now you can see that the deformation is uh, proportional to the sides of the faces. So now it's maybe a bit better. And here I want the light here. Okay, no, no problem. I can select this, assign the different material that is the rib, and I can refresh here. And I can easily generate different version, experiment with that, can make some variation. And of course, those components that I created here, maybe I can use them for other part of the armor of this guy, or maybe to use the same aesthetic of some element, also for the spaceship that is going to use for traveling space, I don't know. And um, we can put the shield part here, for example, as well, or maybe we can, uh, yeah, we can try that. So we didn't manage the UV rotation for this one. We can do now. U reset, U follow of active quad, okay. And here I want to apply the shield. Yes. Good. And uh, this works quite fine for the pattern element. Of course, there is always a deformation. So the thickness of this part is not going to be always the same because it's squeezed and stretched according to the faces. So if you want to keep it more regular, you should keep your topology more regular. If you want this smooth and nice uh, uh, rounded deformation, you have to accept that this is going to change the thickness accordingly. And, uh, for example, I created a couple of components, like uh, this one, for, for instance, just for see what happens when you have, for example, a component with uh, some circular element, like this. So, this component is called uh, Glass 2. So, I can, for example, try to apply in some part of, the, of my glass. This one, I have the material C Glass 2. I can assign here and assign here, and I want to see what happened. Okay. Okay. This is a clear example of how the deformation works. Uh, Sometimes, if you want to have very regular and uh, rounded element, or just uh, keeping some part fixed. It's not possible at the moment, at least, with this uh, with the tessellation, because you always have a deformation according to the faces. I mean, it should match this one because you have to combine all the faces and we should recreate this shape. So if you have to fit this component here, it's going to squeeze the circle in that way. So sometimes it's something that you can accept. Some other time uh, you want to do that differently. In that case, probably it's going to it's gonna work better to just interact with the final object with some boolean operation or some other technique that you may use for hard surface modeling. So let me remove them. For example, I wanted to experiment also, where is the glass here? I wanted to experiment also with um, uh, some spot element. 
So I have a component that is hidden at the moment, this one. So I want to try to apply, I don't know, some spot, not here, sorry, here. Here, for example. So I have the material, C spot. And let's refresh. And we have some spot light here. Of course, in this case as well, the shape was perfectly rounded, but at the end, because of the deformation that we have here, it's going to change its shape. I have an idea in future to allow us to keep, for example, some part fixed, maybe according to a vertex group. But I mean, this is a plan for the future, but it's not yet a feature that you can use. Now, if you have Phoenix to experiment with your shape and you're ready for uh, making the final version of that, we can increase again the number of subdivisions that we have here. Four was a good number. And now I can refresh it. and add an extra subdivision surface on the final object. Okay, and uh, that's nice. Let's check the, the surface, the quality of the surface. We can use some zebras and it's not that bad. I mean, considering that we are working with mesh modeling, that we are working with uh, uh, sharp uh, seams uh, along a very nice uh, smooth curvature this is I think it's not a bad result I hope that you enjoyed this tutorial and uh, I hope that it was clear how to use all these settings maybe we can just recap briefly the main important when you work with this specific case I see that in the tessellation uh, settings there are a lot of settings some of them are also closed and hidden there are more but uh, in future i would like to consider this as kind of kernel for uh, the tessellation and maybe i'm gonna add some buttons for just automatically set all the things that you need for the most use cases for example i think this may be one of the most use cases so probably i will try to add a new function just for automatically make the tessellation with all the settings that we have seen together but before that let's see again which settings we use so from the top if you want to use the modifier of your component remember to activate the modifiers from here otherwise if you have some modifier it's gonna keep only the original mesh of the object if you want to follow nicely the shape as we are doing as we are uh, doing we want to use the subdivision surface on this object here we can't use a modifier that change the number of vertices the faces of the topology after that but we can use shrink wrap we can use uh, displays uh, we can even use a uh, multi-resolution and the play with the vertices they they are allowed and uh, in this case in the tessellation we need to use patch if you want to shade it, activate the smooth shading. And for the thickness, in this case, I want to keep uh, exactly the thickness that I was planning to have. So for that reason, I use constant that is uh, uniform, no matter which is the, the area of the faces. Otherwise, when you use relative, it's going to make them shorter when you have smaller face and uh, taller when you have bigger faces. So the scale is uh, for incrementing the thickness of all of them. One, if just if you want to keep the value that we have here in the Z. And, uh, and here, of oh, the rotation, active UV, because makes life easier if you're working with loops in this case. And it's also necessary if you are working with a mirror. Otherwise, you're going to have always a different rotation on the other side. When you have a mirror with the active UV, you can keep everything consistent. And uh, merge, if you want to combine all the pieces together, like we did here. And if you have some loops that you want to close, you can use close mesh bridge loops. There is also an option for uh, cap holes, in some cases where you have like uh, 
just loop that you want to cap. And of course, the most important, if you want to assign different components according to the name of the material that you have here, you have to use multi-component. Multi-component is uh, inside selective because this small piece of the panel here is made for uh, uh, changing the tessellation according to some criteria. For example, to make them only on the selected faces or maybe to make them uh, only on uh, some specific material ID. In this case, when you use multi-component, actually, it's not important anymore which is the component that you are using here because uh, no matter which one is the component, it's going to use them according to the material. And uh, I think that's all. One uh, last trick is, uh, okay, this is uh, maybe, a, I mean, this looks to me a nice technique for making these uh, complex geometries, but sometimes you want just to add uh, a specific feature only on some faces or maybe only on some loops. Or some loops. So uh, another approach is, for example, to select uh, this loop here, just one part, and select, for example, uh, this component, and uh, select this, tessellate, patch, uh, constant here, align origins here, smooth shading, it's not important, and uh, merge, OK. And uh, also just on selected faces. And uh, you can see that now it created this thing here only on the faces that were selected. Of course, this is a regular tessellation. We can change the active UV for the rotation. And also, we can use in uh, iteration, we can combine iteration. Let's see that this is an iteration of my tessellation. I can combine with the unused face. So basically all the faces that we didn't use for this tessellation were going to be combined with this one. Okay, of course they doesn't match in terms of uh, uh, subdivisions. So in this case you should use the same amount of subdivision that we have here. For example, if we want to reach 8, we're going to use uh, 3 subdivisions. And here we are using the modifier. So we can use here the modifiers of my component. OK, now they match. Of course, there is a gap. But uh, let's try to make it different. So let's say that I have a special version of this component that is uh, aligned to the origin. Origin is here now, so I can select this piece, move here, delete those faces that I don't need. Okay, this is the rib 001, so I can still change my component from here. Rib 001, okay. And now we have this of oh, the merge. It's calibrated not properly for this case. Okay, now we added just this feature on this object here. It's continuous, it's smooth. We can add a subdivision surface on this. Uh, or maybe we can reduce one subdivision here and another one here. So they always match. I can try to refresh. OK, so now I can uh, add some subdivision surface. And I just added a feature in this specific part of my object. Together with a selection, you can work with the material. 
or as, a, as an alternative. So let's say that we don't want to use unselected faces. Now I'm going to change some setting. And uh, if you want to prevent uh, beta selection to refresh automatically each time that you touch something from here, you can just lock it. Now it's locked. So we can change the settings without refreshing it. So for example, let's say that I want to add this element here on the material that are rib, so 0, 1, 2. This is the index of this material here. So from here in the tessellation setting, I can use material ID index 2. Now I can refresh it. Okay. So you don't need to make component for all the faces. For example, in this case, I may want just to add the feature here automatically instead of making manual extrusion. And now I can continue to work with uh, this object here. I can still uh, change this one. So let's say that I want to move those, change a little bit the shape, maybe move this. This one, I can refresh it. And instead of making a manual extrusion that are going to be problematic if you want to change it, I can just refresh this one. So what are different approaches? This one, this is, I think it's quite nice, especially if you can work always at the same level of detail. But of course, this one is going to be good, for example, if you want to continue to interact with uh, other modeling technique that you may already know, for example, for hard surface modeling. So this and uh, remember that tissue is already shipped with Blender, but uh, at the moment, uh, it's not the most updated version of tissue that you can use. So usually I recommend to go to my GitHub page where you can find the tissue. And from here you can find the master branch or usually the most updated version is the development branch. So I usually suggest to use this one here because I often update it and I may have fixed some bugs. So I suggest to download from here. And if you want to support me in my work in making the documentation and uh, continue to develop new features for uh, the tissue add-on, you may consider to subscribe to my Patreon page where I share some uh, special tricks or just some tutorials or just if you want to support the work that I'm doing. Thank you and uh, keep blending.